disclosure, I decided to watch this movie for no other reason than it starred CM Punk. I'd spent years watching him in WWE, and after he pretty much left that life completely in his rear view, I was curious to see him in a different type of role. Just so you know, in this review and in real life, he will always be CM Punk to me. He's not Phil Brooks, just like The Rock is The Rock and not Dwayne Johnson. So in this review, he will strictly be referred to as CM Punk, or just punk for short. You may have noticed from a past top 10 list of mine, I like haunted house stories. I like the movies, the books. In fact, I just finished reading two of them, one much better than the other. And of course, real life ones. Eagle Eye viewers may have noticed Local Haunted House, The Columbian House in my video intro. Despite my love for the genre, I didn't really care for this one. CM Punk is a man down on his luck looking to renovate an old Victorian mansion in a Chicago suburb. You don't really get to hear much of his backstory at first. It kind of gets pieced together throughout the movie. But in the beginning, it's strongly hinted that his fall from grace was pretty terrible. To get back on his feet, he got in his head that he and his pregnant wife need to start fresh away from the city. So he promises to fix up the old place in time for her to move in sometime later. Problem is, the house is run down, needs a lot of work, and it has a case of the hauntings and doesn't like people of low character. While the idea is cool, it absolutely does not follow its own rules with two of the deaths, one of them being all kinds of bullshit. It introduces a few characters. You have the Protestant pastor who lives across the street, who seems friendly enough. She keeps popping up on their porch, but you can tell she knows something, but won't say what. I keep going back and forth on the character and what her motivations are for why she does what she does, but I guess it fits. Then you have Milo, he's an old co-worker who comes to help with the renovation project, who really only seems to be there to get backstory and increase the body count. Lastly, there's Sarah, a very attractive girl who keeps showing up around the house. Now the very first living thing you see in this movie is Punk's adorable dog, Cooper. For a large chunk of this movie, Punk and Cooper are the only characters on screen, and in a movie that's praised for its gore, I could literally see the clock ticking for the poor dog. I have to say, it was funny seeing CM Punk, a man partly famous for being straight edge, that means he doesn't drink, doesn't do drugs, seeing him play an alcoholic and someone who smokes weed. He did an admirable job. It's his first big role, and you could tell he kind of has some growing pains. It's almost like he's a half step behind to react to something. I will say, though, it's fitting a former wrestler who spent a lot of his time playing a bad guy really shines in this movie when he's pissed off. It's those moments where he was most believable and didn't appear to be just a guy acting. One thing I really enjoyed was the look of the house itself. It's just cool. It's actually shot in the house where the ghost story is based off. Now this movie isn't billed as a true story or anything like that. The creators were very clear about that point. They say they just picked the loosest details from the history and built upon it to make their own story. The home is stately, creepy, and it oozes actual body fluids, making some interesting <laughs> and off-putting moments. One of the main problems is Punk's character, and most of the main characters, aren't sympathetic. Punk's kind of a dick. He's mean to his dog, he cheats on his wife, he keeps drinking despite promising to quit, and when you learn about why he lost his job and his reputation, it just makes it worse. Now, I couldn't even root for the ghosts because one was just super annoying with her giggling, and the other I just wasn't a fan of. It has its moments that are pretty creepy, but to be honest, I was kind of bored by it. On two occasions, I checked to see how much time I had left in it. It's only a shade over 90 minutes, but it felt longer. Now, in a weird little gimmick that I didn't really like, Marvels play a big part in this story, like a lot more than you'd expect. Whenever the ghost wants attention, it materializes a marble from the wall and just has it roll around on the floor. The significance gets explained with like two seconds at the very end. 
But it's not anything cool. Ultimately, bad dude gave her marbles. When I watch a movie, I like seeing it has its Rotten Tomato score, and it's funny to see the disconnect between them. This movie in particular. I guess it does enough of the little things that drives critics wild, but doesn't really do anything for anyone else. To its credit, it's well made and the story flows logically from A to B, but it really doesn't do anything to stand out. And the scares aren't anything to write home about either. It's on Netflix, and while I really wouldn't go out of my way to recommend it, I certainly wouldn't tell you to avoid it. Before I get into my final grade, I want to address something. Fans have been pushing for CM Punk to play Ash in the new Evil Dead movie. Bruce Campbell doesn't want to do it anymore, so it is allowed. I'm not quite sure if it's large movement to get him to down the chainsaw. Me, I like Punk. He has charisma in spades, and within some time, I think he's going to be really good. But there's absolutely no one other than Campbell that I want to see in the role. I would rather see Freddy Krueger be recast 50 times than have anyone else play Ash Williams. Word eventually got to Bruce, who shot all that down with a perfectly worded tweet. He said, you know what? CM Punk is great. He should play in a guy in a horror series named Nash or Bash or Lash. With all due respect, the name Ash is, like the best table at a restaurant, reserved. Hail to the king, baby. Four Dr. Chainsaws. Chainsaws.